Hey everyone, Aaron Stewart, Data Access Golf, the live broadcast the day after Matt Wolf's huge victory at the 3M Open. Let's jump in and get talking about this amazing win. Here we go. Welcome to Data Access Golf, your home for rapid golf improvement. And now, from the thin air of the Rocky Mountains, next on the number one tee, your host, Aaron Stewart. Welcome back. Data Access Golf, Aaron Stewart with you. Mercy. I mean, for all of you that happened to see that show, that was unbelievable. It looks like I need to shut some windows down here. We're having some problems here live. It looks like I'm jumping around all over the place, so... Um, anyway, so we are, I'm going to try to shut down some windows. I apologize, folks. This is not going well. Um, anyway, Matt uh, Wolf's amazing tournament. Obviously, it was his fourth uh, tournament on the PGA Tour. It was his third tournament as a pro and um, obviously his first win. And the interesting thing about it is everybody talks about his golf swing and we talk about it a lot. And I'm definitely one who has been... Less than, um, less than, po I, I don't necessarily have a problem with his golf swing because I think everybody should swing it the, the way they want to swing it. And everybody has their own idiosyncrasies. But I always talk about a golf swing under the guise that we as amateurs, I'm always looking at a golf swing as to would that be a good golf swing for an amateur or not, right? And so that's how I try to analyze things. And that's a golf swing you just would never teach an amateur ever. And because it is a very, some people say unorthodox, I would even say unnatural move. You really don't see any other movement like that really in all of sports. And it's not really one that you can duplicate where like a, like as I, I mean, we've talked a lot about, there's a way to know what your body does to propel something. So if, if you like, much like, Fred Shoemaker kind of teaches us to do. If you throw a golf club, if you propel a golf club down the fairway, your body moves a certain way. If you throw a ball, and another thing that we were learning on the body track and um, with Fred Shoemaker this year is if you throw a ball, you can see how your body moves and your body moves beautifully and naturally. And um, so when you start doing some of these unorthodox moves, it... Um, it causes some real problems just because as an amateur, we don't have the opportunity to work on our games so much. And the Matt Wolf golf swing is one where there's so much variability in what he does that it creates a lot of timing in his golf swing. And as if, if his timing isn't on, then he doesn't play well. If his timing is on, then it's great. I mean, he can really do amazing things. So his golf game, at least as it stands right now, is probably going to be more similar to like a Sergio Garcia's, where he, he has a lot of movement when he drops the club down, and as does, you know, Matt Wolf as well. He takes it way up high and he drops it down into the slot. And so there's just a lot of movement there. And then where you actually start coming in, there's a lot of timing that's involved in those types of golf swings. As amateurs, we don't have, and, and I'll, I'll say this too, I mean, Matt Wolf is so impressive because... In order to swing and pr play so well um, with such an unnatural move just means that he worked really hard and that he's super talented and he has amazing um, timing, that he has amazing athletic ability, that he has uh, amazing eye-hand coordination. I mean, he is truly an amazing young man to be able to, but I, but I believe that he would be far more consistent if he got rid of that. And I know there's going to be people that freak out, and, but it's just, it's simple math. You remove the variability from any equation and you make it more simple. The chances are better that you're always going to get the answer right. It's, it's that simple. It's, 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 it's like, you know, gravity. You can get on top of a building and, and drop a ball and it's going to fall down and, and try to hit a spot, right? And drop down. Well, gravity's pretty true and it's going to drop it down. And if you just drop it exactly right, right, you get just this part of it right here in the camera. If you get just that part of it right, then it's going to hit the right spot, right? 
But or we can go and build a bunch of levels and different things to bounce it around and, da, 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 and try to get it to where it is. But every time you add a little piece of variability to that equation, getting it to the target is a little more difficult. That's just that's just life. And so what Matt Wolf has been able to do with his golf swing, and we've talked about deep practice, and we've talked about um, you know neural pathways and myelin and all that kind of stuff. He has worked so hard to make his golf swing efficient. But if you look at his numbers from the week, this is his third professional tournament, right? He missed the cut the first two, didn't play very well. And then the first two days of the 3M Open wasn't that great either. Um, but he went crazy low on Friday and Saturday. And yeah, that wins you a golf tournament. But I'm interested to see how that goes long term for sure. And it will always be my position that for any amateur copying that golf swing would be a disaster. I don't think that you would ever play well. Consistently, there's just too many, there's too many variables. And we've talked about it a hundred times that, you know, the swing bite and some other really cool technologies out there can show you that um, you can, you can play with the, you can come in the next day and put a swing on the golf club that is, it feels exactly the same as you were swinging the day before and the data will read completely differently. So when you add more variability to that and your body's changing every day and you it just becomes a, you know, a, an equation of timing. And Matt Wolf's timing was extraordinary Saturday and Sunday. Not to mention the fa making big putts. I mean, come on, that was one of the best finishes on the PGA Tour this year. I just, Every week is delivering such an amazing story. I can't seem, I can't get enough of this thing, right? To, to have DeChambeau drill an eagle putt, take a stroke lead, and then have two of the young, young, Moriyama was also amazing. His golf swing, I would copy, right? I mean, if somebody came up to me and said, hey, you could have either one of these two golf swings, Matt Wolf's or Moriyama's, which one do you take? I'll take Moriyama's 100% of the time, not even close. His lines are so good, such a pretty golf swing, such good tempo, and just a lot less variability in that. And, and let's be honest, I mean, they were basically tied on that last green. All Moriyama had to do was make that putt, and they tie, and they go to a playoff. And then Matt Wolf drops a bomb. Anybody who's played in match play realizes what that does to you. You always try to tell yourself they're going to make it, they're going to make it, they're going to make it. But when they do, it blows your mind. And then it's very hard to make that next putt. And uh, I've lost a lot of matches that way where they make a bomb and I'm like, ah, geez, now instead of make, instead of having a putt to win, you've got a putt just to tie, just to keep the match going. And those are harder to make. Just mentally they are. So anyway, amazing. It was an amazing weekend for sure. Of, and wow. Youngest guy since uh, Jordan Spieth, all of that. Congratulations to Matt Wolf for sure. But I will never, ever say that an amateur should practice that golf swing. And I, I wouldn't have anybody practice that golf swing except Matt Wolf. He has put so much work into it. In fact, there was a really cool video out about how much work he's put in, that he worked so hard. And with that golf swing, I think he's always going to have to, um, to, to play that well. But hey, it is what it is, right? So he got the big victory. That's what it's all about. He got it done. But, um, but I, would, I, would, I would definitely take a different golf swing long term for him. So let's just jump into the data really quick. Um, as we've been doing in past weeks, I, I create a, essentially a presentation. We go through some of the data to learn a little bit more about Matt Wolf and what he's all about. And then we'll go into some of the data. <laughs> now, previously, we've been looking at our benchmarks and comparing those, but we can't really do that this week because Matt Wolf has not been on the PGA Tour. So they have not been tracking his stats. So we have no 2018 stats to look at for him. That's just not available. So I just kind of kept those all out and cleaned off, and we'll just do the best we can with what we've got because there's not a whole hot lot to look at. We'll move through it pretty quickly. So let me jump down and bring up my computer screen here. If that'll work. There we go. Okay, so, yeah, first and foremost, just to kind of learn a little bit about uh, Matt, finished runner-up the 2017 U.S. Junior Amateur Golf Championship. Uh, see, in his first year at college, he went to Oklahoma State. He earned four runner-ups and first-team All-American honors as a cowboy, like one Ricky Fowler. 
And in his freshman year, he earned the Phil Mickelson Award as the nation's top freshman. So totally awesome there. He also made a putt to clinch the 2018 NCAA Division I Championships. Many of us saw that putt. He has been proving to... His putting numbers aren't very good, as we'll see. But he makes the big putts. And uh, that's incredible. But yeah, I mean, the, the stage he was on, and he mentioned he was nervous... But he also said that he remembered that he'd been raised for, for moments like this and trusted in himself, calmed himself down and ran that thing home for Eagle. Truly really amazing. I uh, played on the victorious 2018 U.S. Palmer Cup, which is the college sort of Ryder Cup kind of competition. It has has the um, collegiate gals as well. Um, they won over in France. His PGA Tour uh, debut was at the 2019 um, Waste Management Open. He did not make the cut there. He was an amateur at the time. And then when he turned pro, he's actually been, he's played in the last three tournaments starting at the Travelers and, um, and didn't make the cut on either of them. Um, so yeah, so hadn't made any money until this week, but he did okay with the money this week for sure. So as far as what this does for Matt Wolf going forward, well, his, his world golf rankings is incredible. I mean, he went from 1659 in the world to 135th, uh, truly amazing. And then as far as FedEx Cup rankings, he doesn't have any points right now. He obviously would get 500 for the victory, um, and that would be his total. And that doesn't put him anywhere in the top 200-ish. So um, he's going to have to have a couple good tournaments here on out. Obviously, he's now in the... Uh, in. Um, and a lot of, of tournaments going forward can make his schedule up, which is amazing for him, for sure. Um, and it's interesting, too. This was the second largest jump in world ranking points ever. And that Michael Arnaud that I've got listed there, he won on the uh, carry, the carry, what is that thing called? <laughs> I always forget it. Oh, the Corn Ferry. There it is. The Corn Ferry Tour. He won on the Corn Ferry Tour um, last year, and that moved him up 1,529 spots. Matt jumped up 1,524 for the second largest gain ever, uh, which is very, very cool. Now, consistency rating. This is one thing we do every single week where we look at how many tournaments they've played in and how many cuts they've made, and we give him a consistency rating. We all know that he's played in three tournaments. I just said it, and he's only made one cut, and the one cut he made, he won. So his consistency rating right now, very early in his career, obviously, is 33%. And 33% would put him way down at the bottom where he's probably going to lose his card. But he just won. It's the lowest consistency rating we've seen of any of the winners, obviously, this year. But it's what we do, right? We like I love to look at the consistency numbers because it's such a cool indication of how well they've played consistently. This is a number that will be super fascinating to watch with um, Matt Wolf because I'm interested to see how consistent he can be with that golf swing, right? I am guessing his consistency number will be very similar to Sergio Garcia's. He's a super talent. He's got amazing eye-hand coordination. He, he obviously works hard. He's got... Um, the mental capacity, he pro mentally, at least right now, looking at him, he's probably stronger than Sergio Garcia. Garcia. It'll be interesting to see how this thing all shakes out, uh, for sure, because he's got a lot of moving parts in that swing, um, and he's got a long way to go from the top down to the slot, and there's a lot of different ways to bring that in. And he, and he showed most of the year the inconsistency until really, it was Saturday, he had put two, two a phenomenal rounds of golf together Saturday and Sunday to get it done. That, and that's the bottom line. So there's the consistency rating. Obviously, there's only one legend who's uh, done more than 90%, and that's Tiger Woods. All right. So here's our benchmark numbers. These are not very exciting this week, and I apologize, but Matt Wolf got me. Because there are no, I've based all of these um, 2018, I've based all the benchmarks on 2018 numbers. Obviously, Matt Wolf does not have those. So we will just look at how he did with his numbers and compare them to the benchmarks, and we'll just leave it at that for this week. Um, driving accuracy for the tournament, he was 68%. Now, um, Saturday and Sunday, that might be a, a cool way to look at it, because Saturday and Sunday, he actually went up quite a bit and had an amazing 
tournament. I think his, uh, I think he greens in regulation were like 90% on Saturday, I'm on Sunday. So uh, incredible. But anyway, 68% for the tournament. Our benchmark is 55% um, hitting fairways. Uh, so obviously he did very well there. Phil Mickelson and Tony Finau, Jimmy Walker are players that hit less than 55% of their fairways. Um, greens in regulation, 83%. And, and sometimes he was hitting some, some pretty gnarly spots. Um, very strong, generates a lot of club head speed, and was able to find the green uh, very efficiently. That 90-something percent, I think he was high 80s and then high 90s Saturday, Sunday, that brought it up quite a bit. Otherwise, he was quite average um, on, on Thursday and Friday for his greens and regulation. Sand saves... So 33%, he only got up and down one time out of three. Uh, our benchmark is 45%. So we would say, you know, work a little bit on the sand. One thing that you'll notice when Matt Wolf is in the sand is he doesn't do that great big huge knee kick, his, his big trigger for his swing, um, which makes sense. You've got a, you're basically standing, you know, in, in um, you know, a foundation that moves. So you don't want to go too crazy and change the lie, but he does not have that same kick. I don't know if that affects his uh, efficiency out of the sand or what. Um, I do, I do wonder about that super high outside uh, thing with the club. I've, I mean, I go outside with the club, but it, it, it it's when you want to do really kind of a high soft one, and uh, but he still dropped the club inside. So maybe it should see uh, more closely how he plays the sand and. A couple of shows ago on the podcast, anyway, we talked about a, a number of different ways you can play out of the sand, and it'd be interesting to see how he does it. I actually didn't see any of his sand shots. So strokes game putting, 0. .675. He did, definitely did not win on his putter. And a lot of tournaments this year, we've seen guys winning with their putter, although he made big putts when they mattered. That 18th hole, 26-footer for Eagle, <laughs> take it away from uh, DeChambeau and then put all that pressure back on Moriyama was unbelievable. Um, one of the best putts we've seen all year for sure. And a cool reaction too, really amazing. All right, scrambling for the tournament, only up and down half the time. Our benchmark there is 55%. So based on our benchmarks, we would say, hey, spend some time in the sand and spend some time around the green, working on your up and down game there. Our benchmark is 55%. Obviously, he was at 50%. So below that benchmark, essentially saying anywhere in here, folks, as we're looking at our games, um, if we drop below those benchmark numbers, then that's the part of the game we should be working on. And if we are above those numbers, then let's look for something else to work on. Uh, so we just are utilizing our time in th the most effective way. So we're always working on the part of our game that's weakest. So that's all we've got for Matt Wolf in this particular one. So we'll just, we get to jump right into the money now, which is cool. I mean, this is actually pretty funny here. You'll get a good kick out of this. He's essentially taken over the number one spot in money per cut, right? <laughs> because he's made one cut and he won the tournament that he made. But anyway, his, his prize money for his week of hard work was 1.152 million bucks. His total score for the week was 263 strokes. So take, uh, take that 1.152 million divided by four. He made $288,000 a day. And then uh, if we average that out by five hour rounds, he made $57,600 per hour, which works out to be about $4,400 per stroke, right? Divided by that 263. So his career earnings so far to date, 1.152 million bucks. One check from one win, and that's it. He's been cut every other tournament. So his grand total of money per cut is $1.152 million, bucks, <laughs> which puts him in first place. Oh, man, which is hysterical. Tiger Woods used to lead the list, and this is essentially the list of players that have won this year and how much they make per cut. Tiger Woods did lead the list with $367,421 per cut made. Uh, but now, you know, Matt, at least for a little while, is going to lead this list until he plays, you know, three or four more tournaments. <laughs> and if he wins a, another one, then it might be till next year before he falls down 
and loses that uh, that top spot. So pretty interesting stuff for sure there. I should probably change it, right? So you have to have at least 20 starts or 10 starts or something like that to qualify for this. But it's not the way we've done it in the past, so we'll leave it alone for now. Uh, anyway, so congratulations to Matt Wolf. As you know, I usually save these last screens for and when you go to PGA um, Tour.com, they have these stats pages. And if you're leading in, in one of the categories, if you're in the top 10 or top five of one of the categories, I'll grab those screens and bring them up here. But Matt Wolf isn't even on the PGA Tour yet. We would assume that he will accept the membership um, probably today. And then all the, uh, the good stuff that comes along with it will be part of it, including the 500 FedEx Cup points, and I don't know where that was going to make him ranked. I know we, we had this little screen up here. We know he's 135th in the world, and we don't know where he is as far as FedEx Cups, FedEx Cup points are right now. So anyway, that's essentially it for this Data Monday. I know it's a short one. Normally, we have a lot more data to look at. Congratulations to Matt Wolf. Really, congratulations to the world of golf. We got a glimpse of the future of golf this weekend of a lot of young 20-year-olds uh, DeChambeau, um, Moriyama, Wolf, I mean, a lot of good young players that are going to be around for a very long time. And it was cool, too. I heard in in the interview that Matt Wolf talking about his good buddy, you know, this this Moriyama kid and, and how they played together and and uh, even in high school and uh, played junior golf together and to have them all coming up. And, and Matt talked about how it was very comfortable to play with to play together because they'd been playing since they were kids. And that was part of the reason he was able to stay calm and, and play well. Well, Moriyama actually got um, earned, earned enough points with his second place finish to get temporary status, to take all the exemptions he wants till the end of the year. So we'll see if he can get up into the top 125 and, and be on the tour full time next year. Um, but yeah, truly amazing. I guess you would definitely expect uh, um Matt Wolf, yeah, I'll be interested to see where he where he pops in there at the FedEx Cup, um, for sure. See where he shows up in there. But anyway, really interesting week, totally fun week of golf, an amazing finish. The young guns were just not backing down, and it was brilliant. Totally fun to watch. So until next time, Aaron Stewart saying thank you. I guess oh, I should have brought this back, although nobody wants to see me. But. So thank you for joining me on this live. Uh, again, celebrating Matt Wolf's big win, and um, I think it's it's awesome. He plays the game he want the way he wants to play it, but it's definitely not, not a golf swing I would let my kids use, and it's not a golf swing that I would recommend any amateur use. Because frankly, fellas, we just don't have, or, or frankly, folks, we just don't have the time required to make a swing like that work consistently. And, and Matt does, and he's worked hard to make it work for him, and it worked well, and he got the job done and made the big putt when he had to, and you, you have to just take your hat off to him and, and just say, wow. It was, it, was ama it was an amazing display of golf, no question about it. So till next time, Aaron Stewart saying better data always means better golf. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Data Access Golf with Aaron Stewart. Check us out online at dataaccessgolf.com, and we'll see you on the next episode.